is getting more difficult, but it still happens. And what we learn in the spec collective is that it happens almost everywhere. So uh, one of the questions is, is this really uh, just a matter of an idea? If you have to you export the idea of squatting, uh, and can it be adapted to all kinds of conditions? Uh, we find in Holland that our conditions have changed. The squatting is still possible because there's, there's some play in the system. Although the law says it's uh, two years and a half in prison, what happened in practice, uh, people went uh, to the courts, and it turned out that, the, that there existed a, a, a ruling of the European uh, uh, court. And although anarchists normally hate the European level, uh, the European court uh, decided that uh, um, it was not legal to ev evict anyone from his home or her home without giving this person the right to uh, present the case to a judge. And on this basis, a uh, court in, in Holland ruled that uh, although the law says it's a crime, the police are still not allowed just to knock in the door and to drag the squatters out to prison. No, the squatters have to be advanced eight weeks in advance for the eviction, so they have the time to go to court, and then a judge can decide uh, whether it's really uh, a big uh, a big need to evict the squatters now. So a judge may say, may, perhaps not now, because the, the owner doesn't have plans for the building, um, perhaps later. Well, those things were discovered because uh, 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 quite a few of lawyers supported the case of squatters. So the battle in the courts has been quite important. So, the, of course, the, the battle in the streets and the, uh, and the uh, campaigns that have been waged to, uh, to uh, present a good image of squatting, like a white book on squatting that was produced two years ago with a hundred case studies of positive stories about squatting, uh, open days where the public was invited to uh, visit squats all around the country. Uh, it was quite important, was a campaign uh, with big banners made possible by the squatting movement as I put on cultural institutions to start as squats. It turned out that in many cities the main venue for pop music started back in the 1980s as a squat. And people forgot about this. But through these enormous banners, people are made aware of the cultural uh, uh, function of squatting. So this battle is based, is based on very on, on, on uh, lots of fronts. But I have, to, I have to make it clear that the legal, uh, technical matters are quite important. So it's really important to get lawyers involved. It's a big uh, and to get support from powerful actors. A previous uh, attempt to criminalize squatting uh, in the end of the 1970s was uh, uh, averted by making coalition with Christian people, uh, Christian organizations, who unfortunately now were not interested anymore in squatting. Mm -hmm. and tried to interest them, but they were not. But th at the time, they were. So coalition building is possible, because squatting is on the one hand disruptive, you can say it's an attack on uh, uh, new, uh, new uh, liberalism. On the other hand, there's a continuity that creates uh, support for squatting. That's what has been done. So now in the Netherlands, you can say perhaps almost half of the population still supports squatting. All the left-wing uh, parties support it. The right-wing parties, unfortunately, have the majority. Many people think that Holland is a progressive country. But, uh, to, I have to disappoint you, uh, there was never, ever in the history of the country a pro progressive majority in Parliament. So, uh, Amsterdam is really different. If Holland would be like Amsterdam, it would be a completely different country. So, Amsterdam is really a progressive, progressive city where you can basically do anything to get away with it. Uh, but the rest of the country is much more, uh, especially in smaller towns, are much more repressive. So, and the overall politics is really quite, it's not so tolerant as people think from the outside. So we really have to wage this battle to at least get the, uh, make sure that the, that the uh, tolerant uh, part of the population uh, gets the upper hand, and the progressive uh, part of the population 
even then, it, without having a pro progressive majority in the in the uh, in the country, it was possible to build this movement. It has been very powerful. You can ask now why it why it has declined. It has declined a lot, and the main reason for its decline is not repression. The main reason for its decline is the so-called anti-squatting business, anti-squatting industry. So companies have uh, uh, been started that offer the um, uh, owners of empty properties the service of putting uh, tenants in them, but only very few of them, and tenants without any right. So for example, an office building uh, could be inhabited by three students. And of course, the students live there, they are protected by law. So the same law that protected squatters against intrusion in their pri privacy, in their the privacy of their homes, is, is also used by the anti-squatting industry who, uh, who employ rightless tenants. And the number of anti-squatters in Holland uh, uh, is about 10 times greater than the number of squatters now. So in Holland we have uh, more than 10 million of square meters of uh, office buildings. They're empty now. They would have been easily squatted uh, back in the 1980s, but now it's impossible because in each of those buildings there are just a handful of uh, students. I can't blame them, of course. For them it may be an interesting, uh, cheap way for living, but in many, many cases uh, they have no rights at all. They can be kicked out in three weeks' time. Have no right to have pets or even visitors or something. So, but th this is the main cause, I think, that uh, squatting has diminished in Holland. But uh, it took us a long way. Uh, squatting started in 1965. It still exists. It's still going strong. So, uh, I think it's a powerful uh, model uh, if you find that uh, uh, allocation of space um, through the market and through the state is not sufficient. It doesn't work completely. Uh, people still have desires for, for living somewhere or for uh, organizing cultural or political activities. On the one hand, there's empty space. On the other hand, um, it's a good model to bring, the, bring those two together. Okay. Okay. Uh, Quick question. Uh, is, is there big confrontations between these student scab squatters and actual squatters? Uh, no, there's no confrontation at all. In fact, uh, uh, many people hardly know the difference between the two. And uh, of course, for squatters, it's difficult to attack people who are on the on the bottom on the of the of the housing market in a precarious position. How how would you attack them? Although you can call them scabs, but they are people uh, basically homeless people, or people who need a place to live. And sometimes it, it can be uh, seen as, a, as an argument in favor of squatting, because without squatting, all those thousands of people, the anti-squatters, wouldn't have a place to live. But I think there's a possibility of trying to politicize this, uh, this anti-squatting industry. And I, uh, I, I suspect that we're going to see uh, initiatives uh, more or less post-squatting initiatives to do this in a more socially acceptable way. There are already some initiatives started, starting when uh, people uh, uh, simply ask for, for, for an, uh, an empty building to use it for a limited time, but the limited time can be forever. By the way, it can be forever because there's an, an oversupply of buildings, and then uh, put cultural in initiatives in it. And it's also an organization that uh, rents out uh, temporary space for uh, people in need on a socially accepted uh, uh, way. At least they have a commitment to rehouse the people when they uh, uh, when they uh, when the building is needed by the owner. But of course, a lot of this is, is, is uh, mythical. We have a, a, especially a bubble in the commercial real estate in Holland. Uh, it's still being built, although less and less of it is needed. And for the companies that own them, it's, uh, they don't like to write it off. Because they, if they have to take it off their balance sheet, so they just pretend they're going to, 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 uh, to rent it out soon. If they have to depreciate it, uh, they have to, it has a negative effect on the balance sheet and they get in trouble. So 
it's possible to go to those companies and say, well, uh, just give us the building, 